Hello, this is Dr. Kevin Connors doing a series here on different mechanisms of cancer. And in this presentation, we're going to talk about Helicobacter pylori. Long name, you probably know it by H. pylori. <clears throat> H. pylori is a major cause of cancer. It is, what H. pylori is, is a bacteria. Looks like this on this presentation, this picture there. It's a gram-negative bacteria. That's the classification of bacteria. It is. Uh, it falls under. Uh, <clears throat> many of the gram-negative bacteria can act similar to a virus, and that's what we're going to explain in this video here. Uh, viruses basically reproduce not extracellularly, but they reproduce intracellularly. Uh, bacteria mainly stay outside of the cell. That's why uh, uh, antibiotics can kill bacteria, and antibiotics cannot kill viruses. So if you have a viral infection, an antibiotic is useless because the virus is hiding inside the cell. Whereas you have a bacterial infection, you use an antibiotic, it kills it quite readily. Except for a few of the bacteria. Some of the gram-negative bacteria, H. pylori, but, by the way, Lyme disease, the Borrelia burgdorferi bacteria, also is in the gram-negative bacteria family. And the reason why uh, uh, Lyme disease is so horrible is that it has the ability to go inside the cell and hide so that an antibiotic can't kill that uh, after a certain stage as well. So that's what makes H. pylori so sneaky and so bad. So what it does, it has these little flagella on the back of its body, on the, either side of the body, and that's what helps it move around in within the bloodstream and within the extracellular spaces. Also, I'll note on this slide, it has these things called lipopolysaccharides that are in pink, that big word in pink. Lipopolysaccharides, all of gram-negative bacteria have that this extra layer in its cell membrane called a lipopolysaccharide. The bad thing about lipopolysaccharides is that they become liberated and become what is known as an endotoxin when you destroy the bacteria. So this is why you can have such a negative reaction or a Herx reaction when you effectively kill the bacteria because it liberates these lipopolysaccharides that your body reacts to uh, from an immune response. So you end up with a hyperimmune response to the particles of dead cells, uh, specifically these lipopolysaccharides. So the, I said that gram-negative bacteria, the, one of the bad things about them is some of them could get inside of a cell. So this picture shows um, it on the outside of a host cell affecting receptor sites on the host cell. Uh, it stimulates an immune response that is good, but it can stimulate a hyperimmune response. It can be a huge player, as far as an antigen goes, in eliciting an autoimmune disease as well. The other thing with cancer with H. pylori is that it, it uh, reduces the, uh, the cell's ability to go through apoptosis. And if you have not listened to my series on apoptosis, I'll challenge you to do that. Apoptosis is the normal program cell death mechanism that is broken on every cancer patient. In order for you to have cancer, you have to have uh, a broken apoptotic cycle. It has to have started at least with one cell. So here's a picture of a normal virus life cycle. The virus does not replicate outside of a cell, a host cell. The virus goes inside the cell and starts to replicate. Inside the cell, it's immune to any antibiotic use. It's immune to your immune system use. Uh, now, typically, when a virus infiltrates a cell, it has the cell has the ability to to notify the immune system that it's been infiltrated by an enemy. It puts up these little markers on the outside of the cell membrane telling macrophages that there's a bad guy inside the cell, so the macrophage will literally devour the entire cell and thereby kill the virus. That's how your body ends up killing viruses. It sacrifices self cells in the process to kill the virus. Because otherwise, the virus will continue to replicate, goes outside the cell, 
goes inside another cell, does the same thing, replicates and replicates, breaks out of that cell, goes to another cell, and it, it just becomes a nasty thing. And viruses that are difficult to kill, you can see why. H. pylori and Lyme disease, the Burgdorferi bacteria, have the ability to, once they go inside the cell, they disable that membrane marker from telling the immune system that it has been infiltrated. Pretty sneaky, huh? So, whereas viruses go inside the cell, the cell actually gives off a marker to tell a macrophage, a white blood cell, that it's been infiltrated so the white blood cell can engulf the entire cell and kill it. When the gram-negative bacteria go inside the cell, they disable that marker so that there's no indication by the immune system that that cell has been compromised and then bad things can happen. This, the bacteria can reproduce inside that cell and go extracellular and do it to another cell in the case of Lyme disease. In the case of H. pylori, it can even be worse. H. pylori can disrupt the apoptotic cycle. So apoptosis is controlled by a series of different cascade mechanisms within the cell. The most important are called the caspase system. The caspase system is what turns on the cell death program. H. pylori interrupts the caspase system so that that cell doesn't go through apoptosis and stays alive so that the H. pylori can replicate. So H. pylori's purpose is self-survival. So we'll interrupt the normal apoptosis cycle so that we can stay alive and replicate inside the cell safely away from the immune response, away from maybe a medication use of an antibiotic, and we'll stay alive. Well, the problem is, is you're keeping that cell alive with a broken apoptotic cycle. If it affects the DNA and the replication cycle, now you have cancer. So what cancer is, is a broken apoptotic cycle, the cell is not dying. In a broken replication cycle, the cell is now in a rapid replication state. It could all be caused by H. pylori. If you look at the World Health Organization, you'll see that H. pylori is the number one cause of stomach cancer worldwide. It's a very common cause of esophageal and colon cancer and prostate cancer and other cancers as well. So it's a nasty player. It's one of the top five causes of heart disease as it gets in underneath the endothelial layer, which is the skin of the inside of the vessels. So summarize this up. It acts like a virus. It goes inside the cell. It inhibits its apoptosis so the cell doesn't die and it sets you up for cancer. So we want to kill this thing. H. pylori is a bad guy. So first of all, how does it enter your body? H. pylori is basic, basically a foodborne or orally borne bacteria. You can get it from kissing somebody else that has it. You can get it from their saliva. You'll get it from someone who prepared food. Basically, you can't live your life without being exposed to H. pylori maybe multiple times a year, maybe multiple times a week. H. pylori is ubiquitous. There was a few articles out in the AMA and the uh, British Journal of Medicine a few years ago that said conservatively over 50% of the world's population have an undiagnosed, undiagnosed H. pylori infection. It is everywhere. It's ubiquitous. There's no hiding and running from H. pylori. Now understand, if you have healthy HCL production by your stomach and healthy digestive enzymes in your duodenum, your first part of your intestines, you won't ever get it. I mean, you will never get sick from it. You will be exposed to it, but your immune system will kill it off right away. H. pylori, or H. pylori goes into your stomach first, and if you have adequate hydrochloric acid production by, by your stomach cells, it will be killed, and you will have no issue with it. So it acts like a virus that infiltrates itself. It can break down apoptosis uh, and block that, but it starts in your stomach. Now, also, if you've ever heard of H. pylori, you probably heard of it in its connection to stomach ulcers because it is the cause of stomach ulcers, if you're lucky. So if you're lucky, you get a stomach ulcer, you get take an antibiotic, you kill the H. pylori. Most of the time, you don't get a stomach ulcer. It infiltrates the stomach, it gets out into the bloodstream, and it spreads around, and it could cause all sorts of things like heart disease and cancer. 
So why uh, do you never knew you had it? So you just have H. pylori infection, an undiagnosed H. pylori infection for 3, 10, 15, 20 years, and you end up with heart disease or cancer. Not a good thing. So how do you kill it? Well, if you have it in the acute stage, similar to Lyme, you can kill it with an antibiotic. So it's not yet infiltrated the cell. It's still in the stomach. It's just destroying stomach cells. An antibiotic is the first order of choice. The problem is, is that patients that come to me, they have cancer. Uh, it's too late for antibiotics. Antibiotics are not going to work. You have to use some natural antibiotics because antibiotics will not get in the cell and though it will kill it when it goes extracellular, you can't be on long-term antibiotics, especially if you have cancer. It's going to break down your rest of your immune system, and it's just not a good thing to do. So you have to use some natural antibiotics. So there are some good natural antibiotic things that help with killing H. pylori. We use a lot of medicinal mushroom issues with uh, H. pylori. It works very, very well to kill the H. pylori. Probiotics are really important to help you prevent H. pylori, and remember H. pylori is a bacteria, so it, all bacteria and all viruses are competitive. They are opportunistic. So if you can provide your body with uh, other competing good bacteria and good viruses and good flora, you're going to prevent um, infiltration and nasty things. So using probiotics, creating your own probiotics by drinking water, kefir, and things are really a great way to go to help prevent H. pylori issues. Uh, you also want to do things, if you already know you have cancer, to stimulate caspase function. Remember, it's the caspase system. That's the system, the internal system of mechanism that uh, pushes the apoptotic uh, program that is the intrinsic apoptotic cycle of the cell. And you do that with medicinal mushrooms again. So you could take a hint that I really like medicinal mushrooms. They work quite well to kill H. pylori and to push the caspase system. Berberine has also been found to do wonders in helping push the caspase system and help kill uh, H. pylori. So that has been a favorite of mine too. Make sure that you are using enzymes on a regular basis. If you have anybody with H. pylori in your household, you basically have to treat the whole house. So uh, it, it just to prevent uh, uh, H. pylori, you got to make sure you're, you have healthy HCL in your stomach, healthy enzymes in your gut. I like the U.S. Enzymes brand, that's a fermented enzyme. It works much better. I also like Zypan. That's a standard process product. And other HCL products you could get just in your local store. You take that only with your food. And this is you're using enzymes, these enzymes solely as a digestive enzyme. So you're taking it with, your, with a food. Uh, berberine is a good product to take on a regular basis. And we use, though we use our own blend, personal brand of uh, blend of medicinal mushrooms. This immunotone is another uh, product that you can actually get online. So hope this helps. There's a lot of information online. If you want to search for details and studies on H. pylori and cancer, um, it's not if it's not anything you've heard about up to this point. It's because your doctor just hasn't told you about it. There's just tons and tons of research on this. All right, I hope this helps. Talk to you soon.